Hey, today we're going to talk about uh, basically solutions and how we can describe a solution. But before we describe a solution, we kind of have to explain what a solution is. Uh, like you remember from the last unit or from the last concept, a solution is a homogeneous mixture. In other words, a solution is basically when the, the so, a solution is a mixture that is evenly dispersed. So you could have a solution of salt water, you could have a solution of uh, sugar water, any, anything that is completely mixed evenly throughout is considered a solution. So this is an example of a solution or a homogeneous mixture. Remember that homo means same, homogeneous, it is evenly distributed throughout the entire uh, substance. Now, in our solution, we have different, different components. We have the solute and the solvent. So, for example, if we think of each one of these black dots as a substance like sodium chloride or sugar that is in a solution, the little dots represent the solute and the stuff that they're dissolved in, in this case, the liquid, is going to be the solvent. Solutes are divided into solvents. Usually, or at least for our purposes mostly, the solute is going to be a solid and the solvent is going to be a liquid. That's not always the case. You could have solutes that are, that are liquid, that are liquid, solvents that are liquid. You could also have solvents that are gas and solutes that are gas, or any combination of phases. Uh, between them. Now when we have what is called a solution, another way of describing a solution, this entire thing is a solution, a solution is considered to be aqueous if it is dissolved in, what do you think, aqueous. Give up. Or did you already come up with the answer? In water. So an aqueous solution of sodium chloride would be written like this. In other words, that is salt dissolved in water, forming a homogeneous mixture or a solution. Now you'll recall from previous lessons that water is a polar molecule. We have two hydrogens and one oxygen. And this water orients itself, so the negative area, that, the area that holds the electrons, or the oxygen, which is more electronegative, is going to attract the positive, or slightly positive, hydrogen atoms. Now when you put these, when you put some salt, or sodium chloride, into a water solution, recall for a moment that sodium is slightly, is positive ion, chlorine is a negative ion. Sodium lost electrons, chlorine gained electrons, chlorine becomes negative. So, when I put this into water, it's going to split apart. Sodium, chloride, and what's gonna happen is the water is gonna orient itself around each one of these ions. So around the sodium, the water is gonna sh shift itself like this, and around the chlorine, the water is going to shift itself like this. The positive hydrogens are going to be attracted to the negative chloride ions. Likewise, the negative oxygens are going to be attracted to the positive sodium ions. Now, these solutions, or ionic solutions, and remember ions contain a metal and a non-metal, or a metal or non-metal and a polyatomic ion. Anyway, it contains a metal and some form of non-metal or non-metals. Anytime you have an ionic compound that is soluble or dissolvable in water, it is going to be considered an electrolyte. An electrolyte is any substance that transmits an electrical impulse. In other words, because of the difference in charges, it's going to transmit electrical impulses throughout this solution. It's going to move the electrons from the sodium to the chlorine to the sodium to the chlorine and move it around the solution because of the differences in the charge. Again, to recap, 
Solute is the wa is the substance dissolving, and a solvent is what it dissolves in. Most cases, water is going to be the solvent. In fact, it's considered the universal solvent. Peace out.